Hello, hi, welcome back. Welcome back to Virtual VSC. On behalf of Vermont Studio Center, we hope that you are well and healthy, sane. Sure, yeah. Uh, and with that, I am excited about today because we have two people giving us tours. We have Dave Madden, a writer, who is giving us a tour of his office. And then we have David Humphrey, a painter, an artist, giving us a tour of his studio. Um, are you guys ready? Dave or David, whichever one wants to go first, you're up. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Hey, Sarah. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Thanks so much for inviting us into your studio space. Where are you exactly? I am in San Francisco. Well, thanks so much for joining us. I'm really excited to see your studio and hear a little bit about your creative process in your home studio. And I really enjoyed having you here at VSC when you were a resident in September 2019. Yeah, thanks so much for being here with us today. Oh, well, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, great. Okay. Excited to see your studio. All right, I'll go for it. Hi, I'm Dave Madden, and I'm here to give you a tour of my office. I'm a writer, I'm an essayist, and I write nonfiction books. I was at Vermont Studio Center in September 2019 with many, many good people. I met so many great people. I, I, I love so much of what VSC does to create community. So I'm, I'm really happy to be part of this online talk show. My first book I wrote is The Authentic Animal Inside the Odd and Obsessive World of Taxidermy, and uh, which leads me to the first item on the tour, my deer head. Um, I don't have a name for it. I don't believe in naming taxidermy. I, I imagine the deer, when it was alive, had a name on its own, and I don't know what it is. My partner bought me that for Christmas about 15 years ago or so, almost, when, when I started working on the book. And it's, it's, all, it's like from the 40s or 50s, he got it off eBay. And I've cherished it ever since, and, and he said, I don't want it in the apartment, so it's here. And it, 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 I, we all need our space. And this is mine, and this is basically where I put everything that we don't have space for in our apartment or, or my partner doesn't want, want to see. In addition to the deer head, you can probably see that there's a lot of this, I call it yarn art. It's technically called cruel work. It's on every wall um, I collected. I have for a long time. This piece here that you can see right there, my mom made that many, many years ago, and it was hanging in my grandparents' house for a long time. And after my sisters took all the good furniture, it was like the only thing left. So I took it, and my mom was like, oh, I made that. And I was like, oh, that's nice. I I'll have it. I just thought it was fun and kitschy, but it turns out it was like a craft project. And then after I met my partner, I got this this big square one, because it fit the wall of my kitchen. And then suddenly I realized, oh, I've got two of the same kind of thing. And it turns out many, many thrift stores and antique stores in the Plains and the Midwest have a lot of cruel work for cheap. So I keep collecting it. I should probably stop. I've got books, of course. This is where I keep fiction and nonfiction. And then over behind me, this is like reference and like school teaching books, because I'm a school teacher. Here is my turntable, my record collection, which I don't have any room for in our apartment. So I'm the kind of professor that listens to records, but only when no one's around, because I, I get embarrassed. Here in the back of my door is where my doctoral gown hangs, which gets uh, used just once a year at graduation. Um, and it's my favorite thing to do, is to dress up in big regal robes and process, which is what I get to do. The thing there is a Pittsburgh Pirates um, plaster of Paris wall hanging that my dad made when he was very, very, very young. Okay, so now I'm sitting in the chair that I like to sit in, this nice leather chair with an afghan that my grandmother made many, many years ago, and I'm listening to Sounds of the Rain. And my little sound machine, because there's lots of noise outside, and, and I don't like noise. Um, and I'll turn that off for, for our purposes. So here I read such books as Foucault's The History of Sexuality, or Leo Bersani, Is the Rectum a Grave? Um, or, oh, here's uh, Brene Brown, who I haven't read yet, but people tell me she has things to say about shame. So she's on the list. I'm, the book I'm working on now is about sex and shame and stand-up comedy. So that's most of my office, I guess. I was asked to say something about my process and, and kind of the work I do here. So what I have here on my desk right now, this is, can you see? 
It's Susan Sontag's essay, The Pornographic Imagination, really good. I highly recommend it. And my personalized book weight. So I put it down there and I just type out word for word the passages I marked as a way to kind of get them in my head, but also have them on a file because it's a library book and I can't keep it forever. And then you probably can't see unless I go like this. I've got lots of like notes and and messages um, because I need to be reminded of, of things that I often forget when I'm writing. And one that's helped a lot is that kids made ignorant without sex education need your book. And I think that that's true. I am sad that it might be true, but it, it might be true. Turns out there's not a lot of good sex education in this country. So one of the things I'm trying to write toward is fighting that bad situation in contemporary America, among all the others, the long, long list. So I think that's everything for my office. I thank you for being here with me today. I thank you, VSC, for everything you do. Goodbye. Cool. Thanks, Dave. That was awesome. It was good to see you. And up next, David Humphrey. I'm here outside my studio, right up there, on a rare sunny day here in the very, very late spring during quarantine. And I have for you a studio tour. And um, hope you enjoy. Thank you. Studio. There it is up there. I've been here for almost 15 years with my wife, Jennifer Coates, who also has a studio. There's just down there in that structure. So here's my basement, which also doubles as a music room. I've got a collection of junk here, ceramic figurines that I sometimes incorporate into sculpture, things collected waiting for a cue perhaps, things to be pounded onto to make noise, things to make more noise with others, bass guitar. There's a Tom Burkhart. Now upstairs is the studio. There's the lawn mower got to have out here. And here's my studio. As you can see, I make a lot of things. I need to be working on many things at the same time in order to do anything at all. It's like a, a kind of a boiling situation where there's a kind of critical mass. So I have studies and works on paper that help me think. There's a little deck out there with some more sculpture. Let's go around, let's go see that sculpture. More drawings. More than I can possibly show, more than I can even possibly digest, but I'm always trying to learn from them, learn through them. Here's an old one from the 90s. And here's one that I've been kind of working on since the 90s, and here it is, still alive. And that one actually has glued into it a copy I made from a Pontormo at the Walters Art Gallery when I was a student at MICA in the 70s. Here's my drawing table. A 
Let's go see this sculpture that I've been working on. Some little ones. Sculpture is so impractical, it takes up space, but it can never be finished. I always love making it. Here's one. I'm trying to have a sculpture with a painting in it. You can see there's some embedded figurines, ceramic. There it is, topped off with a horse. There's some more horses underneath. It's kind of a medley of a sculpture. And here's something I made yesterday. At least it's an opening gambit for a sculpture. It's a giraffe. And fragments, old sculptures fall apart and then all the parts can be rearranged into new things. Thanks guys, that was really great. So uh, you see this picture here? You know how these change up from week to week or segment to segment? This one right here is a Thomas Kincaid. I'm just kidding, it's a Thomas Condon, close. I would love to um, get some input from our viewers. If you are a former resident, former visiting writer, visiting artist, former staff, uh, if you have images, pictures, photographs, drawings, sketches, uh, paintings, prints, anything of the Red Mill, send them this way. You can send them right to, um, you know, just send them right to galleries. Galleries at Vermont Studio Center. That'll work. And we'll take a look at them and give you a little shout out. So, yeah. All right. Uh, see you next time. Thanks. Bye.